Hey there, welcome back to Lead Coding. So I was recently solving the Stone Game 7 which appeared in one of the recent contests. And I already had a video for Stone Game 3, 4 and 5. So I thought why don't we complete the entire list starting from the Stone Game 1 till the Stone Game 7. So now we are at the Stone Game 1 and we will be solving this problem. So the problem statement as usual is the same Alice and Lee, they play a game with a pile of stone. Now there are even number of piles arranged in a row and each pile has a positive integer number of stones. The objective of the game is to end with the most stones. The total number of stones is odd. So there is no tie. Alice and Lee take turns with Alice starting first. Each turn a player takes the entire pile of the stone from either the beginning or the end. This continues till there is no more pile left to pick. So assuming that Alex and Lee, they both play optimally. We have to return true if Alex is going to win the game. So Alex is the one starting the game first. So let us first see a few interesting facts here. So the length is given even. Let us index them. 0, 1, 2 and 3. So the starting index is going to be even and the end index is going to be odd because the length is even. So Next, this is Alex. Let us say Alex is picking from the index 0. She's having two options to pick from the index 0 or to pick from the index 3. So she can either pick from an even index or she can pick from an odd index. So let us say she's picking from an even index. So she's picking 5. And then Lee is going to have two options. The one is to pick from the index 1 which is odd and the other is to pick from the index 3 which is also odd. So he is left with the only option that is to pick from the odd index. Alright, so he's picking from the odd index. Let us say he picks up 5. Now, Alex again have two options to pick from the even index or to pick from the odd index. That is from the index 2 or from the index 1. Let us say again she's going to pick from the index even so she'll be having four then three will be remaining and the only option with Lee is to pick three so we can see that Alice is uh, winning the game so if Alex keeps on picking from the even indices Lee will only have option to pick from the odd indices and if Alex she keeps on picking from the odd indices then Lee will only have the option to pick from the even indices so Alex can have all odd indices or all even indices. It is up to her. This is the fact number one. Now there's another fact that the total summation of all these stones is odd. So there cannot be any tie. It means that we already know the number of even indices and the number of odd indices are uh, same. So here we can see that this is an even index, this is an even index, it is 2. This is an odd index, this is an odd index. The number of the odd indices is also 2. So they both are equal in number. But the summation of all these stones in one of them will be more than other. So that the total summation can be odd. So what I'm trying to say is summation of even index and this is the summation of odd index. So one of them should be greater than the other and then only the total summation of both of these can be odd. So they cannot be equal otherwise the total summation will be even and in the question we are given that the total summation is odd so that is why one of them will be higher. Either the summation at the even indices will be higher or the summation at the odd indices will be higher. Now, as we can see that Alex is uh, having the opportunity to start first. She can either occupy all the odd indices or she can even occupy all the even indices. So it is always Alex who is going to win the game. So we can simply return a true here. Simply return a true or 1 and it will be accepted. This is a constant time solution and a constant space solution.
Now for those who don't get this intuition during an interview or during the contest, there's one another solution using dynamic programming. Now for those who haven't done any such question till now, should go to the description. I have the list of solved problems from the same list of stone games. They will be the stone game 3. And I have explained there in detail that how to think the same in terms of recursion and then optimize it in terms of top-down dynamic programming and then make it to a bottom-up dynamic programming. There's a step-by-step -step procedure for that. So you should go to the solution 3, watch the entire video and then you will be simply able to solve this by your own. Otherwise, let us continue. So what I am going to do is, I am going to think in terms of recursion. So I will make a function f, this will be my recursive function. This function is going to return me the difference. The difference of total number of stones occupied by Alice minus the uh, total number of stones occupied by Lee. So initially I am going to pass the entire array and that I'll be passing in terms of the indices. Starting from the index 0 till n minus 1, I'm going to pass the entire array to the function f. Now, it is going to return us the difference. So, the difference will be the total summation of Alex minus total summation of Lee. And if this difference is greater than 0, then we can say that Alex is going to win. Obviously, it will be greater than 0 because we already saw there's no possibility that Lee is going to win. So, it will be always greater than 0. So, now let us define this function. Now in this function, we have two options to pick from the index 0 or to pick from the index n minus 1. So we are going to return the maximum of these two options. The first option is, let us say the array is a, a of 0. This is what we are going to obtain minus the same function passing from the index 1 till n minus 1 because we already took the first stone from the left. So the array which is left is from index 1 till the index n minus 1 and this will be passed on to Lee to pick. Another option is to pick from n minus 1 and call the same function starting from the index 0 because we didn't pick from left side and n minus 2. And this function is going to return the answer, the optimal answer for Lee that will be subtracted from this. Now again we can expand this function. So this function will be expanded. So this was for Lee. Now it will also be maximum of two options. The first option is to pick from the index one and call the same function for Alice from the index 2 till n minus 1. And the other option will be to pick from the index n minus 1 and call the function for Alex from 1 till n minus 2. So these two options will be for this and similarly for this there will be two options. So it will go on in a recursive fashion till we have certain stones remaining. So let us make this helper function f. Let us name this as help passing two indices i comma j and of course the vector of int p. It is going to uh, denote the piles. So if i is greater than j that means we don't have any stone remaining so we are simply going to return 0 otherwise we will be returning the maximum of two things the first one is uh, p of i picking from the start minus calling the same function for the opponent that will be i plus 1 till j and the other option will be to pick from the index j that is the last index or from the right side minus calling the same function for the opponent i comma j minus 1 and p so these are the two options and return if this 0 n minus 1 and p if this is greater than 0 so if it is greater than 0 it is going to return true otherwise it is going to return false let me make n as p dot size All right, let us try to run this. Help of i comma j and p. It is giving us correct answer for this test case. So let us now submit this. When we try to submit, we will see that it is going to give us time limit exceeded. Yeah.
The reason is this is an exponential time solution because on each move we have two options. So it will be an exponential solution. So we have to optimize it. When we draw the recursive tree as we have done in the part 3 and in the part 7 and in other parts, we will see that there is a lot of repetition and that could be memoized. So we are simply going to make our DP array. The constraints of i, j, that means the size is given as 500. So we are going to make it as 501. Initialize this with minus 1. And here we can check if dp of i, j, if it is already computed, there won't be minus 1 at this position. If it is not equal to minus 1, then it is already computed and we simply have to return dp of i, j. Otherwise, we will have to compute it and when we are done computing, we can store it. Let us try to submit this now. And it got accepted. So now, if n is the size and there is 501, it is n square in terms of space and n square in terms of time. And the constraints are low, so it got accepted. So this is it for the solution. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to check the playlist of Stone Game. It will be in the description. I have added solutions to all the parts in the description. Thank you.